Rest in peace, Mr. Nash. Thought that was appropriate after his passing. I love that song anyway. Good morning. It's Monday, um, and I'm going to go fast. I have a lot of things to cover. <laughs> uh, here we go. Da, 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 da. Um, you should first of all, just on your little screen there, just an idea, do coffee time, and then put a little Lena in front of Lena and Kelly in front of Kelly. You don't have to go back and forth on that weird stuff anymore. Just a suggestion. Let's get into health news. Has anyone tried that celery juice stuff? They sell the book at Costco, um, and you can either juice it or you can put it in your food processor. You drink it every morning. It's supposed to be the miracle, the new miracle juice. Um, I told you on a private video, Lena, um, I'm not talking to Kelly because she's rude, um, Lena only... <laughs> about grounding or earthing. Try that out. See if that does anything. And basically the premise is that um, the earth has a charge and it's very healthy for us. And that by just placing your feet or your body on the earth, um, you can recharge and rejuvenate people. Um, I've had medical miracles and weight loss and just other things. Um, and that when we placed rubber in between our feet and the earth, um, we deprived ourselves of some uh, some medically necessary things. I found when I was uh, at my property at the Grand Canyon, I walked around barefoot a lot because uh, they had red the red sand and everything, and I would rinse off. And I was 150 pounds effortlessly. I don't really tie it. I eat whatever I want whenever I want. Um, and so for me, I thought, hmm, I wonder if that would aid me. So anyway, they sell it at Costco when it's a... Um, or I'm sorry, that, that you'll have to look on the internet. And either take it or leave it. Um, the Dukin diet, very, I think it's close to the keto diet. And um, one of the, the uh, is it Prince Philip's wife is always on it. So I thought, I mean, I'm, I have to weigh all my options. I won't be jumping into any diet uh, situation anytime real soon. But uh, I heard of that Dukin diet. And I think it's rather new. And because, of course, a, a royal is... Uh, Participating, it makes it sound more interesting. Um, while I was finishing up, I was going to talk about candling because I tried candling. It's kind of a spa treatment. I had about a $500 credit at a beauty school. I've had every treatment. I love it. I am a beauty school whore. Yeah, that's what I am. And so, uh, my friends, I had a Bichon's and they took Shadow, one of my puppies. And in exchange, I just had credit rather than payment for the dog. So anyway, there's something called candling, and it's a, a kind of a linen with beeswax. And you put it in your ear. Just look it up. And we were all convinced, oh, my God, because when you take the candle out and you open the bottom of it, it's full of wax, sometimes powder, which they tell you is um, from medications that you have, old medications. And, you know, you can't you can blow your nose, you can, uh, but you can't clean your ears very well. So I looked up candling, of course, a doctor um, showed before and after, and it doesn't do anything. <laughs> but we did, I bought like five sets. We did it every, and like my friend's husband, he was like, oh my God, I can hear, some. but um, it's a placebo effect, I guess. But as I was leaving that website, um, there was, right after that candling, was this website, Satisfying Earwax Removal Candling. Um, this is just a warning. You can't unsee it. But when I was watching it, I was, you know, like sometimes people watch boxing and you'll see them f moving in with the boxing or people that use scissors. And I, when I was watching it, I was sort of like, ah, like, it, it's unbelievable. You should see it. On to our next topic. I, I have a lot to tell you about this, so. I'm going to get into some good stuff. Oh, that travel stuff, uh, those travel websites where you can go places, two things. First of all, you have to go, like when I went to Machu Picchu, their, their dollar um, exchange is so diminished compared to the U.S. that you're getting you know, like six, seven times your, your dollar's worth. So you're staying in a hotel for like seven dollars a night including breakfast, coffee, meats, and everything. I had to be really aware of that because I took out like $200 when I got there. First of all, it's like planes, trains, and automobiles because you have to go through 
many different steps to get to Machu Picchu. Through the last town of Cusco, you go through Lima, and you change, I mean, there's different ways you can go there. I went by train um, one way, and then I went through this beautiful coach the other way. Um, you go through in really impoverished properties. It's um, eye-opening for someone that's only experienced, not me, but <laughs> only experienced. Same thing when I went to the Philippine Islands as a child, to see people going, you know, bartering, and when they get their meat, they just swipe their hand and all the flies fly off, and they do a lot of bartering. It's, um, it's um, I thought it was really important as a child to see how um, other people lived. It was important to me. But the same thing in Machu Picchu. So you get there, and um, you're at 12,500 when you're in Cusco, the town outside. 12,500 feet is the same altitude that aircraft are required to put oxygen on when you're airborne for the it's the FAA regulations. So um, the issue with being there is that if you don't go when you're young, you're going to miss out because the older people, it, because the heart problems can't go. But secondly, um, oh, it's real, it's just fun to experience. So I went there. My agenda is always food. I want to try. I refuse to ever go to a McDonald's or any. I will only eat their food. Same thing in Germany, Italy. So. I show up and I have ceviche, and I have their pisco sour is their uh, big drink. And wherever I travel, I bring the, the drinks from that, the alcohol from that culture, back to neighbors and friends and everything. And it's with the pisco, they mix with an egg, and it's a weird drink. Um, and so I also, when I was at Machu Picchu, now we're at 12,000, we're up to like maybe 14,000. So a lot of people pass out. <laughs> this young couple on the train told me, they were talking, to, yeah, I'm fine. And clunk, the gal just completely passed out. So usually people will stay outside in Cusco for several days to acclimate and then go up to Machu Picchu. And then, of course, you climb through this majestic Incan empire. It's unbelievable. But when I was on the train, I said, well, what else? I mean, I tried the Pisco. I tried the ceviche. Have you tried the llama? I go, no. Oh, it's between filet mignon and a pork tenderloin. It's delicious. you got to try it. So, of course, I sought that out when I got back. And I saw, saw a vendor, and they had um, it was a burger. I had the burger, and I had a sweet potato. And, oh, it's I go, is this llama? Yes, yes, you know. So I paid them. We're, we're talking soles. Soles are like a, kind of a Mexican. I'm, tr I'm trying to think of a country that you would be familiar with. But you literally are paying like, you know, 10 cents for something. It's a whole meal. And you forget that because you want to get a good deal. So I got the thing, and I was eating it. And right through I could hear English, and I had eaten half, like, well, not bad. And I, oh, so I ran on the store, and I go, hey, hey, uh, is, this, is this llama? Do you know if this is llama? I'm trying to, and she says, oh, uh, no. I said, I'm trying to try everything. I bought cocoa, cocoa leaves, the cocaine leaves that you put in tea. It's supposed to help with altitude sickness. and I mean, there's other little things that you buy. You buy... Um, llama caps and uh, sweaters and everything. That's what you buy when you're over there. So she sa I said, is this llama? She said, oh, no, it's, um, let me, oh, let me get over here. No, it's, um, you see this, uh, vein veins? Yes, yes, um, chicken and cow <laughs> And I it was such a reaction to me, because they put it in a blood and make it into a patty, that I actually, like, flung it. It just flung, like, how could I, it was, and I tried when I was in, um, not Madeira, oh, it's the greatest town, I stayed outside of there, and they have a casino, and they have hang gliding right through the city, and I went to a casino, you know, Americans can't gamble, and so I'm gambling, they got, you know, their, their money, and I put it, and all of a sudden, a security guard comes over, and takes me off the machine, and, oh, well, you learn something every day, but anyway, you don't get those experiences, unless you go. And I went early because it was one of my bucket list things. So uh, the second thing is I've already solved the cooking issue, Lena, because I'm going to do, uh, we're going to do, because I'm the firstborn. I get to boss you around. We're going to do an adult, a woman scout, which means in order to get your cooking badge, you have to travel to France and learn how to make pastries and, and bread and whatever, and then come back and cook a meal, and then you get your badge. So I'm gonna do that in Thailand. Sushi, I think. Italian, of course, but I'm pretty good at that. Uh, German, oh man. Here we go. 
I lost my thing already. So anyway, this is what's going to happen for us. Uh, so I already let it kick me off. I hope it's all oh, bad. This is really bad. Anyway, the other thing is um, you had shown, I'm going to have to re-record this, I think, uh, because it completely blacked out the screen. Let's see if I can recover. Oh, gee, I don't know. I don't know how you do it. I don't love this. I really don't. Um, so, it, any, anyway, um, the other thing that I was talking to you about, um, that I saw on, on your website was that you were doing the African Grey thing. And, um, I just had a little story I want to tell you about African Greys. Uh, my son and I saw one, uh, named Einstein on television. He's the best imitator. And the African Greys are not beautiful, but they're the best mimickers. And so at some point, when he was very young, we decided we would like to get an African Grey. And we went to pet stores, and oh man, you know, they're $2,000, $3,000. They're expensive birds. Um, so we waited, and we'd visit. There was one that we really enjoyed. And then we took one of our many, many trips. We went to Barcelona. Barcelona. Um, I love that story, that the reason they call it Barcelona is because they love their king so much. And he had a, a stutter or a lisp and couldn't say Barcelona. And they loved him so much that the community intentionally mispronounced <laughs> the name of the city. How to love your leader that much. Imagine that <laughs> kind of loyalty in this country. But anyway, we did, we did seven cruises in two years. And so Barcelona has uh, Los Rambas, is the bird uh, market. And of course, we went to the Picasso Museum and all, all these other places. It was a 14-day cruise. It was splendid. Oh, we love cruises. So um, we go to Los Rambas, and they have baby African greys. They start out with like a gold around their eye, and then as they age. So we knew where they were babies. They had gold. And we were like, oh, my God. Look at them. Um, how much are they? $375. My son and I look at each other like, and I said, I'm American, so I can't, um, oh, oh, you know, like we're going to, oh, that's so hard to take because we would have loved to have bought one, a baby, and trained it ourselves. And he says, do you have your passport? And I go, yeah. And he goes, oh, we just do a health certificate. We, we'll set you up. <gasps> Boom. Pay <laughs> the money's out of my pocket. Jeffrey and I are hopping down the street like, Mom, let's teach you to do this. Let's teach you. Oh, we were so thrilled. And then we get to the airport, and they had had, they had an uh, wooden box with all the vented areas and they'd given it some f I'm sorry, food. And uh, and they we showed up and they go like, uh, ma'am, you can't take a bird on a flight. Uh, there's quarantine? When you get to the States, that bird has to be in quarantine for like two months. It costs you five grand. <laughs> Are you kidding me? But also my son and I started to realize they were baby African greys, and they're the best mimickers. These babies had to have been taken from a nest because the baby was making, like, lion sound. I'm like, holy crap, Jeffrey. We can't take that on the airplane. What if it starts making the noises? Anyway, we ended up giving it to a security guard. I said, I don't, I mean, if you let it loose or whatever, I don't mind, but, oh, stupid. American. Oh, okay. Health certificate, sure. They probably use my passport information for some other scandalous thing, too. Oh, but anyway, that's it. I didn't give you any quotes. Here's one. The universe has a perfect accounting system. No debt ever goes unpaid. I like that. And then um, our father is famous for two quotes. I'll give you one, and then you can look up John Hay Whitney. But one of his is that it isn't... Um, it's, it's, uh, oh, Dad, sorry, sorry. Um, it's not enough anymore to be fair. We must be ferociously fair. You know, when someone's done wrong, you have to aggressively make up for the wrongs, especially when they're innocent people. So, anyway, African... <laughs>